Hi everyone, and welcome back to a new episode of EWD. Today, we're going to apply all the knowledge from the previous videos to scrape data from the MrBeast YouTube channel and then from there build interesting analytics. For example, the number of videos published each year or the total number of views generated by the videos. If you are new to this channel or you're back watching this video, do not forget you can find timestamps in the video description below. And all the code that you're gonna see in this episode is available on GitHub, link in the video description below. And now, without further ado, let's get started. Alright, we're gonna start by having a quick look at the architecture of this simple project. And this is because it's always important to have a high level understanding of the system that we're gonna build before jumping into the implementation. So here, the first step is to get the data. And to do so, we're gonna code a script called download.py. This is gonna send requests to the YouTube website, which will answer back with a response. And we're gonna do this over and over till we get all the necessary data. Finally, when we are done, we're gonna dump all the data into a CSV file. Then we're gonna start with the second step. Here we're gonna read all the data from the CSV file, which will be the inputs of the code found in the analytics.py file. And as you might have guessed, here we're gonna write all the code to build the analytics, which we will then display on the screen of our laptop. Great, and now that we are cleared this out, let's start coding it. All right, let's start by opening an empty file that we're gonna call download.py. Here we're gonna collect all the data for each video published on the MrBeast YouTube channel. So the first step is to import the channel class from the PyTube library. In this video, we are not gonna explain how the PyTube library works in detail. So if you have never used the PyTube library before, my recommendation is to go back and check all the previous episodes of this series, where we have explained in details how PyTube works. All right, to get this going, what we need is the URL of the YouTube channel. So let's create the URL variable and right after create an instance of the channel by passing the URL itself. Next, we're gonna display a message on the screen to let the user know that the download has started. To start downloading the data, the first step is to cycle over all the available videos, which can be found under the .videos attribute. Here, again to show the progression of the download, let's display the title of the video that we are getting the data for. Next, let's code a try except. In the first branch, we're gonna call the .streams attribute, whereas in the second one, we won't do anything. And in Python, this can be done by typing the pass keyword. So now, at this point, you may wonder, but why do we need a try and accept statement? Just be patient, we're gonna see it in a few seconds. And now, let's move ahead. Now, we're finally ready to get the data. First, let's assign an empty dictionary to the D variable. And then, let's populate with the data from the video. So for example here, we're gonna retrieve the ID of the video, the title, the publish date, the total number of views, and so on. All these data are available through attributes, and that's because V is an instance of the YouTube class, which we have explained in details in episode number two of this series. All right, and now it's time to understand why we need the try except statement. In a Python interactive shell, let's import the YouTube class from PyTube. Then let's grab a URL for a MrBeast video. So as you can see, when we check the title attribute, we get something out of it. But this is not true if we check the description attribute. Here we would expect to find the description of the video, but instead we don't get anything. And that's because not all the available attributes are populated when we create an instance of the YouTube class, but instead they are after we call the streams attribute. So why is that? The answer is pretty easy. When we type in .streams, a request asking for all this data is sent to YouTube, which will send a response right after. All right, it makes sense. But still, we have answered the question. Why do we need the try except? The thing is that we are sending quite a few requests to YouTube, and it might happen that some of them fail for some reason. So first of all, if this happens, then the program crashes. And you know, the thing is that if you are scraping a small YouTube channel with a few videos, this is not a big deal. But on the other hand, if you are trying to scrape a big channel like MrBeast, this is gonna take some time. So what we wanna avoid here is to lose all the data just because a few videos failed when we were scraping the YouTube channel. The second reason is that even if we fail to retrieve the streams, we might be still able to retrieve all the other data. Let's see an example. 
that's called the dot streams attribute. As you can see, an exception pops out. However, if we check the content of the description attribute, as you can see, we get the description of the video. All right, I hope this is clear. If not, let me know in the comment section below and I will answer right away. And now let's go back to our code. All right, in the div variable, we're gonna find all the data that we have decided to scrape. From the ID to the title, the number of views of the video, when it was published, the description, the keywords, and the length in seconds. But like this, we're not saving the data anywhere else. So what we're gonna do is to add the div variable to a new variable that we're gonna call data. And this is gonna be a list which will hold all the data for each video. So let's define it as an empty list before starting the first cycle. All right, after we've done iterating over all the available videos, let's display a message to let the user know that the download has just finished. So what's next? Once we got all the data, the final step is to save them on our laptop. This can be easily done by using Python itself. However, to make our life easier and faster, let's use the pandas library. So I'm gonna assume that you know a little bit of pandas, and that's because it's not a goal of this video to explain you how pandas works. However, if you don't have any previous experience with it, let's just say that pandas lets you create spreadsheets or tables from a bunch of data, and then play with them. For example, here, if we wanna create a table, all we gotta do is to pass the data variable to the data frame class. By doing so, we are creating a table, where the columns are gonna be the keys of the dictionaries found in the data variable, and the values associated with these keys are gonna be the values found in the columns of the table. All right, now what we're left to do is to decide where to store the data on our laptop. So let's define the load path syntax. Here, we're gonna type in the path on our laptop where the data are gonna be found. So let's say that we're gonna go with a folder called data found in the directory where we are running the code. And the name of the file is gonna be identical to the name of the channel, followed by .csv. All right, now let's create the loading path variable, which is gonna be equal to the load path syntax filled with the name of the channel. Right after, let's display a message on the screen to let the user know where the data are gonna be found. Finally, to save the data, let's call the toCSV method on the table variable and pass to it the loading path variable. All right, and now it's time to give it a try. Let's call the Python interpreter and pass to it the download.py file. Here we go, it's working. As we can see, the title of the videos are being displayed on the screen, which means that we are actually downloading the data for each video. However, before we start with the analytics, there is one thing left to do. What we would like to have is something more similar to this. As you can see, every time a video is downloaded, each title is displayed, but before it, we can find the date and the time. And this is really helpful. In fact, it gives us an idea of how long the program has been running. So to get this done, all we gotta do is to replace the print statement with another function, which will display the message, but also the date and the time. And luckily for us, we don't have to create this function from scratch. Instead, all we gotta do is to import the login module. And then just copy these six rows. So if you are unfamiliar with the login module in Python, I'm not gonna explain what the six rows are about, simply because this is not a goal of this video. What is relevant for this video is that here at the first row, we have defined the logger. And you can think about it as a print function, which not only is gonna display the message, but also the time and the date. So all we gotta do now is to replace the print statement with the logger, and then call the info method and pass to it the message that we wanna display. And we're gonna do this for all the print statement that we can find in our code. All right, let's give it a try. And here we go, it works. Great, this is everything for the download step. Now we should move ahead with the analytics, but we're gonna do it in the next episode. So do not forget to subscribe and you won't miss it out. Ciao!